we'll be covering what is biohacking. We talk about it with Healy. Why is Healy the ultimate biohacking device? You know, we're going to dive into that. We're going to talk about why society is so sick. We're going to talk about how to change the brain. The cool thing is, is we have this amazing body and brain and we can change, but how do we do it? Uh, where does our energy actually come from? The ultimate vitality secrets. So I'm really excited to share these with you. And what do you want to see next? So after, you know, in the next 45 minutes, when I finish this, I'd love to ask you guys, what else would you like training on? Every single Monday, I've gone through the, the eight skills, some health biohacking. So my intention today is to share with you my experience in the health and wellness industry, working with over 600 people one-on-one -on -one as a health coach and to give you practical strategies on how to keep your energy high, keep your vitality for vital force high for as long as you can. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about is prevention. I believe that prevention is the cure. And we're going to go through, um, as I mentioned before, we're going to go through, but also if you can take notes, that would be awesome. Take notes, um, ask questions, I'd love this to be as interactive as possible. And uh, as I mentioned, anyone that's jumping on, please jump into the chat and share with us your biggest health challenge right now. So some of you guys have shared here, biggest health challenge right now is recovering from a broken shoulder. Fair enough, so the pain, stress and weight, managing chronic pain, broken vertebrae, um, um, psoriasis and other injuries and pains, anxiety, many different energy shifting universe. Universally, yep. Bones, lungs, mental health. Biggest health challenge right now is giving, giving to self and others, getting self care time in nature. Beautiful, yep. Dealing with numbness, numbness, arthritis in fingers. Morning, everyone from Sydney. Okay. <laughs> so, what we're doing is we're just throwing into the chat our biggest health challenge right now and keeping that in mind. And my intention is that what, what I share with you will be. Um, some support moving through these health challenges. I'd love to ask you guys a question is, you know, looking at this health challenge that you have right now, like what has been this effect on your body? Maybe just write down or have a think about how has this really affected you? How has this affected your relationships? How has this affected your, your business? How has it affected your, your overall health and vitality or mission in, in this life? How has it affected you spiritually? How has it affected your family? And really have a think about just getting really conscious on how has this impacted you? And by the end of this, maybe you can make a conscious decision on, okay, that's great. That's what I went through. Maybe I want to ask for a brand new reality. You know, this is all through intention and conscious creation. We're on the energy game. How do we shift? How do we shift and change? And so this, this has been a fascination for me for a long time, having a lot of health challenges growing up and then having great people around me. I've always been curious. I'm like, how, like asking people, so what is, what, what do you eat? What do you train? What's your training? Like, how have you, how are you so healthy? You know, listening to podcasts, reading books, going to seminars, you know, I was for the first like five years out of high school, I was the seminar junkie, right? I went to everything, Don Tolman, uh, Tony Robbins, Dean Martini. And I also was doing acting. So I was like always learning about communication every year. I'm just, so, I was so hungry. And now over time, it's kind of focused in on more so around, I guess the term would be biohacking, which in my eyes is consciously optimizing your potential, mind and body with the least effort and time. So looking at how do we get the most out of our mind and body with the least amount of effort and the least amount of time. And this has been the last two years, been the most fascinating topic for me because I got to a point where I was health coaching so many people. I was training them on food and nutrition and exercise and fasting and cleansing, which is still really important. But people who are eating healthy and exercising, there was still a massive missing link. I was like, what is this missing link? And that's where Healy came about. And I was like, Healy, ah, oh, frequency, energy, sunlight is a frequency. The radiation from our phone is a frequency. So what are these frequencies in our environment that are causing disharmony? And what are the frequencies in our environment that are causing harmony? And how do we align with those frequencies that cause harmony? Because if we surround us, you know, what we surround ourselves rubs off on us. And so it's about consciously going through this, but I wanna ask you guys a question. Why is society so sick, right? You guys are professionals. You guys are coaches. You guys are incredible people in your own world. This will be easy for you. Please jump into the chat and throw in there. Why is society so sick right now? And from my understanding is 
probably getting sicker. So So yeah, please, um, on the Zoom, there's a button that goes for chat. Um, and if you guys can throw into the chat why you guys think society is so sick, that'll be really helpful. Make this as interactive as possible. So disconnect, disconnection from self. Yes, absolutely. Food is heavily processed and not really food any longer. Yep, exactly. Environmental factors, exactly. Limiting beliefs, for sure. Social media, yep, media. That's right, you know, what we've been taught to on the television is telling us a vision that is not <laughs> in truth. So people are buying uh, a different vision, not their own. External fear-based distractions, fear and trauma. Yep, trauma could be an emotional trauma, something challenging in the first, you know, seven or eight years of our upbringing creates um, emotional traumas from my understanding. And so from our mom or our dad or our role models, wherever the energetic um, trauma was caused will create energetic patterns in our own physiology, in our own psyche, in our own mind and body. Because our body is like 80, 90% water, right? And water holds on to memory. It holds on to frequency, it holds on to vibration. And so from the first seven years of life, even in, in, the, um, in our mom's stomach, you know, in our mom's womb, right? Growing as a baby, we're taking on our mom's energy and our mum's chemicals and our mum's you know um patterns and then we're thinking when we grow up to our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s why are we doing these unconscious things we didn't even you know, like these things are just we keep attracting a certain type of partner we keep attracting you know this relationship with money or our health isn't where we want it to be it can be coming from our past experiences and you know you know energetic blocks so to speak so these are amazing from eating foods um, that's sprayed with toxins, yeah, um, fluoride in the water, absolutely, um, stress, different medicines, personal care products, all the stuff, you know, um, at the supermarket usually is quite toxic unless we have organic healthy stuff. Because we live in a stressful society, medicine solutions that cover symptoms, yes, totally, yep, love that. Um, ancestral karmic epigenetics, yes, also, all the vaccines with poison in the body. But yeah, so there's so many things out there in society that are causing society and, and our, our family, right? I think we know people that are sick and they're kind of uh, been, they're stuck, right? And so there's so many of these. I'm, I want to add on to this because I don't have, we're not going to go through this all day, but this is from my understanding when working with people. Uh, the main reasons why people are so sick today. So one would be toxic blue light, toxicity. So that's the blue light from our phone, our laptops, the computers, the lights that we're sitting under right now, the kitchen at nighttime, we've got the kitchen light on. We go to the toilet in the morning, we put the light on. You know, it's these, this light exposure to the body that's causing an uh, unnatural exposure to blue light. And we'll, we'll explain what blue light is in a moment. moment red light or sunlight deficiency. When I was coaching all these people, I realized that most people are indoors and most people aren't outdoors and they were lacking from sunlight, lacking from red light. And we need both. If we're going to have blue light. We also need, we need the balance. And I'll show you what that means in a moment with the diagram. Uh, most people's sleep cycle is mismatching with nature, is mis mismatching from nature. So people are staying up later than never watching um, tell, or, you know, around a lot of fake light, we're mixing light where, we're, where it should be darkness and we're putting darkness where it should be light. And so if you want to picture the yin yang, everyone knows the yin yang symbol, we are beings of light and we are beings of darkness, right? Shadow or light self, a higher self, lower self, the polarity is up, down, left, right. These are polarities of like universal laws. And so our body thrives best when it's matching with darkness at night with no light and light during the day with no darkness and so it's about matching with nature not mismatching and that's a lot of people it's affecting people's sleep so toxins as we mentioned toxins everywhere the fire retardants on the walls here in the library right the paint the air conditioning the carpets the you know the plastics the food that what we're drinking our water out of like there's toxins everywhere. We get that food. Our thoughts, what we focus on, 
literally changes how we feel. So our gratitude or if we're feeling fear, yes, our thoughts. Nutrient deficiencies, right? Um, a lot of people aren't getting a variety of foods. A lot of people are sticking to a certain diet all year round. A lot of people aren't eating seasonally. You know, this, you know, walk into Coles or Woolies or these big supermarkets, they have the same food all year round forever. It's not natural. Nature doesn't have the same food growing all year round in, in, in different seasons. We need to eat seasonally. So deficiencies from that. Most people are dehydrated <clears throat> and we're spending a lot of time on technology, you know, touching our computer when there's, it's plugged into the electricity is causing extra positive ions going into the body, causing inflammation and also dehydrating the body. Um, we're looking at low redox, which is the electrical voltage in the body as well. And I've got a few more here and we'll wrap this up. But so not following values and purpose. I, you know, it doesn't matter. Some, you know, those people that you meet, they could be eating whatever they want, drinking whatever they want, but they're just high on life and super energetic and their health is great. And I think that comes back to them following their passion, their mission, their purpose and their values. And so a lot of people that I was coaching, I was like, you're not, you're doing all the healthy practices, right? But you're just not excited for a mission. You don't know what your purpose is. And our body's electrical voltage goes down when we're not on purpose. When we're on purpose, our electrical voltage is naturally risen to see creative and to expand problem solving. People are obviously too go, 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 not resting, disconnected from nature, never taking their shoes off, right? The electrical voltage that we put our, when we put our feet on the ground, our body takes in negative charge and that balances out all the positive charge. So we take in positive charge from this technology, the laptops, our phones, computers, even the toxic food that we have, these man-made GMO foods, creates more positive charge in the body. And so how do you neutralize the positive charge? We need balance. So we need grounding to the feet, right? Grounding to the ground, take your shoes off uh, at least 30 minutes a day. Even with Healy, it's really important when using electrical voltage to have more grounding. People think they are, mas they are masters, oh, it's masters of their own biology and nature going against nature and creating. So a lot of people are, are thinking, oh no, I'm, I'm stronger than nature. I'm stronger than, you know, my mind will, will change everything. And I found a lot of people, when I was coaching people, they thought they were God. They thought they could defy <laughs> um, this, this balance of nature. And it's from my understanding, you can do that for a short period of time, but long-term, the more that we think we're God and disconnect from nature, the more sick we're going to be long-term. So it's like, how do we align with nature so that we can maximize our potential? I found a lot of people not surrounding themselves with positive, empowering, you know, aligned humans. Um, some people who are sick are surrounding themselves with toxic, unhealthy, negative people, right? There's an energy to it. Um, mindset, belief systems, people are addicted to being sick because it meets their needs. Some people never get sick. We look at places in some tribes around the world, they don't have heart disease, they don't have diabetes or cancer or any of the obesity, yet they're so healthy. And so what is it? What's the defining factor? So some people in society are, you know, if we're so modern, shouldn't we be never sick again? But sometimes it's the opposite. Um, and so, you know, disconnecting, figuring out our attachment to being healthy, right? Our relationship with being healthy. So I put here fear of their potential and also upper limit. People like just think that life can be normal and, and okay. And that's fine. And that's okay if you think that's normal. But if you want more, there is another level, another level of health and vitality and experience and, and consciousness. And so sometimes we hit an upper limit. We're like, oh, this is, this is as good as it gets. Well, no, it can actually get better. And we just have never been taught. And we've never been taught. That's the thing. It's not your fault, right? So wherever you are with your health right now, complete and utter compassion and, and gratitude for where you're at because it's taught you so much. It's given you what you have today. And so for me, I think a lot of the challenges we face in society is a lack of knowledge. Like how cool would it be if ever, like there was real education, right? If the knowledge was, was just abundantly given out that the government during this pan pandemic was educating people on their immune system, not quick, you know, quick fixes and unregulated vaccines. You know, it's about, a, it's about education. And in the Bible, which I've been reading a lot lately, talks about, you know, said this for thousands of years, it says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so lack of knowledge is really what's holding people back. I think if we all knew better, if we knew better, we would do better. 
we're, we're smart and, and we see, um, you know, if I see someone healthy and vital, I'm going to go say, hey, what are you doing? That's great. It's, it's my own curiosity in their knowledge. If someone isn't given any information, it's going to be challenging. If someone's not hungry to learn and, and be curious, they're not going to learn either. So for me, it's not a matter of ability or desire or motivation. I think you guys all have the ability. I think you guys all have the desire. You guys all have the motivation. And the reason I say that is because you're on this call. The fact that you've shown up today is motivation enough. The fact that you've shown up today is you have the ability, you have the desire. So it's nothing to do with motivation, which is all externally driven. For me, it's about asking the question of asking better quality questions for one. And that then helps create more awareness and knowledge and education. And then once I have knowledge and education, like what I'm going to share with you will be new pieces of knowledge and education. It's then how do we create a system to make it, as I say in these trainings, easy and simple would be a good start and hopefully fun <laughs> at one point. Right. And so these healthy habits that I'm going to share with you might in the beginning be like, why is that important? So I'm going to share with you why they're important. I'm also going to share with you some easy systems on making them simple and, and easy. And um, eventually we can make them fun. Now, a lot of people don't like change, but the thing is, um, change is the only constant in this society, in, in this reality. Change will always happen. Right. Where we are right now will shift and change. And so I want to ask you guys a question. How do we change? If we want to consciously change, if you want to have better health, if you want to have a better Healy team, if you want to have um, deeper relationships, if you want to have more finances, how do we do this? So I want to ask you guys a question. Please jump into the chat. How do we change? So... Yeah, it's interesting by being connected, yeah, through awareness, fantastic, around others, beautiful. And so desire is needed to change, yeah, having a desire. So for me, coming from a kid who, you know, as I mentioned, had a lot of these health challenges, I used to play computer games as well, like like 16 hours a day. I, mom doesn't know this, but I used to like wag school so I could play computer, ga computer games. I was addicted to this because it was an escape from my reality. And that was never possible for me to think that life would be any different. But over time, I changed my brain, right? We've all been through challenging situations. We've changed our brain. We've molded, we've adapted, and we've been able to transform our brain, right? Transcend, um, as Brandon says, the transcends. And so to transcend, <laughs> to improve our consciousness, we must end the trance within us. And so who knows what this is? This is a diagram, <laughs> just a bit, bit of an illustration of our brain. Now, this, these are receptors in the brain. Now, certain, certain experiences have been strengthened in our environment through our habits, through our thoughts and actions and through neuroplasticity our brain has the ability to change. It's plastic. Think of it as pl like plastic. And when heated, can mold and change. Or like glass, when you heat glass, it can mold and change. It can be this beautiful different shape. You melt it down again. Or like gold. When you look at gold, it is the most malleable, most creative um, metal or, I guess, element on this planet. You can shift and change it. And so our brain is the same. And so neuroplasticity refers to the capacity of our nervous system to modify itself functionally and structurally in response to experience and injury. So injury, I've seen stories, I think it was in that secret movie, that guy who was a paraplegic, he was going to die, he couldn't move any of his any part of his body, but through time, visualization and different practices, he was able to then walk again and talk again. So the brain can heal itself. And so our brain, your thoughts, actions, words, and results can consciously adapt and change to whatever you want and need. This is called neuroplasticity. And so um, what I'm going to share with you, I guess, is a few different habits and, and, and um, rituals that you could integrate that will help you with your health. But in the beginning, it's going to feel uncomfortable, but eventually it will feel more and more comfortable. So the first one we're going to look at is, is where does energy actually come from? When you think about energy in your body, where does your energy come from every day? 
I was told, right, growing up, you'd have a certain amount of wheat bix, right? You, how many wheat bix did you have, right? And depending on how many wheat bix you had, you'd have more energy for the day. I was also taught that have your breakfast in the morning, right? Breakfast is really important. Have the lunch, have your dinner. But where does energy actually come from? I realized it wasn't food. It definitely was not food. If anything, food drops our energy because we use energy to digest the food. So what actually, where, where does our energy come from in our body? Now, being in the health and wellness space, guys, this is, a, this is an easy question. This is, should be like energy comes from, boom, in the body. This is our life force, our energy. Where does it come from? And this was something that took me a long time to realize. When I started learning about what I'm going to share with you, I was like, where the, like, okay, health is part of, you need healthy food and exercise and all these different things, but how does it actually generate it in the body? And, and seeing no comments in the chat, it just shows me that no one knows. <laughs> so it's really important to take note on this, guys. If, if we want to optimize our performance and maximize our potential on this planet, we've got to know where does, where does energy come from? Because energy is going to get us to where we're going to go. Now, this is where our energy comes from. This is called a mitochondria, the collective and source. Yeah, beautiful, Michelle. Yeah, collective and source. And in our body as well, um, how our body creates energy is through our mitochondria, which, yes, can be connect collecting energy from the external, like chi or prana. That's totally right. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Mom. Wheat-free wheat, wheat bix. Yep, gluten-free, of course. <laughs> um, so mitochondria, this was a symbiotic relationship where millions of years ago, two organisms, organelles came together and they actually ate each other and came together like this. And this is what we know as is the mitochondria. You can do a lot of research on it, um, but this is where uh, our cellular energy comes from. So what is the mitochondria? It is an organelle. They're organelles found inside most eukaryote cells. So that's us. They're found in our cells, in our cells inside of our body. We can have hundreds or thousands of mitochondria that generate ATP. They generate the energy that the cells need. So they are something, they're sometimes compared to power plants, right? When we talk about the Healy produces ATP. Right, the mitochondria makes adenosine triphosphate, which the cells can use as energy source. So that's also generated from microcurrent. That's why we are also blown away by the results with Healy is because the Healy creates microcurrent that actually triggers the mitochondria to produce more, in fact, 500% more ATP. That's outrageous. Nothing else does that from this planet. Uh, not that I know of. If someone knows of what boosts ATP more than microcurrent like that, then let me know. Uh, ATP, that's, that's mind blowing. So what we're looking at is the powerhouses of our cells. It produces cellular energy known as ATP. It protects our DNA. It can maintains glutathione, glutathione levels, which is an antioxidant in the body. It signals cell reproduction. So our ability for our cells to reproduce healthily, as we know, our cells die and, and uh, reproduced every second in the body, um, activate cell um, optosis, so ability for our cells to regenerate and then maintain cell electrochemical integrity. So it's the health of everything in our body is a result of mitochondria. A lot, we actually have two types of DNA in the body. Did you guys know this? We have our DNA, our double helix, which is a normal DNA, which is our um, what we all know as normal DNA, but our mitochondria has its own DNA as well. And from my understanding, it's the integrity of our mitochondrial DNA that's more important than our normal DNA. And so this is where epigenetics comes in. Our environment, how our environment interacts with our mitochondria is a massive, has a massive part to play in our health. And so mitochondria has its own mitochondrial um, DNA and it's impacted by these invisible forces, the radiation, the blue light, the, the um, frequencies around us, man-made electricity, all these types of things. They impact more the mitochondrial membrane DNA than the other types of DNA. And so that's why those that really focus on a mitochondrial um, lifestyle to boost their mitochondria find massive improvements um, in their health. 
And so let's talk about healing for a second. If we know that that produces energy, what is healing? What is healing? What is your definition of healing? Please put it into the chat. So I went to a sound healing uh, event a few months ago. There was, a, there was a massive singing bowl. There was um, little chimes, a gong. It was just so beautiful, right? The sound is so healing for me. So we went there and the lady says, she gives her talk and she shares a bit about healing and sound therapy. And she goes, intention plus frequency equals healing. And I was like, whoa, I never heard about it like that intention plus a frequency creates healing and so that's something alignment mind body and spirit yeah coherence alignment in the body creates healing love sound he yeah love sound he healing is when i can release what is not good for me and come back to it in balance beautiful so I'd love to uh, share with you a couple of insights from a doctor that i've studied even before healy he has a book um, called by Jerry is Dr. Jerry Tennant. This guy is an absolute genius. He, he calls healing is voltage. Healing is voltage. The cells at a certain voltage die and that cause inflammation. The cells at a certain voltage can heal themselves. And so he says that healing is voltage and um, you can check out his book. It's called healing is voltage. Um, and he, in fact, this is before Healy, he even has his own frequency device that he uses to recharge the meridians in the body. And I was blown away. I was about to invest in one of these. These were more expensive than the Healy. And I, but I was like, oh, this is cool. And then like six months later, I found out about the Healy or maybe four months later. It was amazing how like synchronicity happens. But this would be a book to, to read, um, find online, and probably one of those books that you need to highlight. But he talks about healing as voltage. And so Here's a couple of areas to kind of focus on here. So he talked, this is Jerry Tennant, 2017, Future Science. Uh, he's got amazing talks on YouTube and online. Definitely check it out. So he talks about healing is voltage. So the body has four battery packs. Our muscles are rechargeable battery packs. So we're talking about muscles. The fascia around the muscles serve as our body's wiring. Heard about the fascia, mild fascia release. Um, there's different practices on helping heal the fascia. Our cell membranes are small batteries called capillaries. Inside the mitochondria, we have a rechargeable bat battery system called ATP or ADP. Our DNA has its own battery using scalar energy. So the Healy coil creates scalar. That's how the Healy works from my understanding. So... What we're talking about here is how do we, oh no. Okay, so healing is voltage, then where do we find the voltage? It's like, okay, cool, healing is voltage, but where's voltage? How do we find that? I wanna do that right now. How do we do voltage, right? So voltage is found in three ways. This is what you definitely wanna take notes on. Healing, one third of the electrons or voltage comes from sunlight. One third of the voltage or electrons comes from grounding. And this is, this is what feeds the mitochondria. And one third of the electrons or voltage comes from food. This is how our mitochondria works. It takes in sunlight. It takes in grounding. It takes in food, transforms that into an electron and takes the electron into the mitochondria to create ATP. And so I don't have the visual here. I have a couple of graphics in a moment, but my point here is to realize that two thirds of our electrons or the voltage is coming from invisible forces, free invisible forces, free energy. Two thirds of our energy that we're feeling right now in our body or generating is coming from sun and grounding, free and in our backyard, yeah? And only one third of our energy comes from food and it's physical. For me, this blew my mind. I've been coaching people on food and I've been coaching people on exercise in, in a fake gym, go to the gym, go to, you know, all these different things. It's in a fake environment. It was, I was teaching people not about sun or grounding. And I was teaching people a little bit about food, but what's more important than food is sunlight and grounding. Cause it's two thirds of our food. Think of this as food, but the food for our energy 
is from sunlight, grounding, and food. It's not just food. So light is food. Food, look at an apple or vegetables, they're packets of light. Food is packets, are packets of light. This blew my mind in the beginning. I was like, oh, of course, people are just deficient of sunlight. People are just deficient of grounding based on this, this new world that we're creating. I don't believe in the, this creating this new technological world. If anything, we've got to go back to nature. <laughs> so this is what's called the electron chain transport, the electron transport chain, the main source of energy. So this is the mitochondria. It takes in these electrons that I just mentioned here. So these three things create electrons, the electrons, so sunlight, grounding, and food boil down to electrons that go into our mitochondria. It doesn't come from protein shakes. It doesn't come from you know, certain types of um, supplements. It comes down to electrons, right? We need to eat more electrons. Um, and then from that, it creates more electricity in our body, more ATP. So if this is making sense, please put a yes into the chat. If this is making sense, please put a yes into the chat. That'd be awesome. So here are some really practical, uh, easy to understand ways of boosting our electricity in our body. So I'd like to ask you guys, can moving your body generate electricity in your body? So the answer is yes. Now, but why? Let's go a little bit deeper. So the question I ask you guys is, can moving your body create more energy? So how good do you feel when you go for a run or when you go walking in nature? You're moving your body. Now, why is that? It's called piezoelectricity. Piezoelectricity, the analogy, the, oh, dancing, beautiful. So how, um, how I understand this, when I was young, I had a, a, a toy car, that, like the, I think it was a Hot Wheels, and it had the ability to be pulled back like this and it would wind it up. I'd have the toy and I'd roll it along, along the table on the floor and I'd let it go and it goes, boom, it zooms off. So my ability to, to our ability to charge our cells up, our fascia, our muscles is through what's called piezoelectricity. So I'm just going to read this. So is the electric charge that accumulates in certain solid materials such as crystals. So our body is crystal. It's a, it's a crystallized water system, right? Um, bone, DNA in response to mechanical stress. So mechanical stress moving, exercising, running, doing weights. My, the reason I go to the gym now isn't to build muscles, it's to build my electrical voltage in my muscles, build the electrical charge, right? That's why I go to the gym now. I do everything really slow, light weights, really time under pressure, and I'm not there smashing myself in the gym like I used to, feeling exhausted. I'm going to the gym and that's giving me more energy than a coffee. That's giving me way more energy than food. It's like moving with, with, with breath, um, an intention. So we're looking at intention, right? The intention of going to the gym is charging my body up with, with energy. Movement or the frequency is me moving and that's healing. And that's a type of healing to the body. Some people, there's certain types of like trauma release processes where they go to the gym and they use certain weights to get rid of the, um, you know, these, these full electrical charges in our body of trauma. Um, now that's one. So hopefully that's given you a bit more of a reason to go to the gym or reason to do exercise in nature or to do movement is to move your body. If we don't move it, we lose it. Um, if we don't use it, we lose it. The other one is can sun heal? The sun can absolutely heal. So what I have in, in a couple of slides is the spectrum of light and the spectrum of light. If you look at it, what we have is visible light is only 1%. Actually, I'll just skip through because this is going to make a lot more sense. Um, yeah, so let, I'll, I'll go to that in a second because I'll, I'll go through it step by step. But yeah, sunlight can heal. Sunlight actually boosts the good bacteria. Like say you get the sun on your belly, it can boost the good bacteria, just like probiotics, just like prebiotics, right? We all take supplements to boost, pro, boost these um, good bacteria in the stomach. We can also do that through sunlight. I can show you the studies on that. It also kills the bad bugs in our belly as well. So if we're, we're having gut issues, we've got health challenges, leaky gut, all these different terms today, we can heal that through the sun. 
crazy, right? Even cleansing the blood, even um, the sun reduces the ability for your body to take on fat and take on weight. So it's one of the most, um, one of the best weight loss practices is to get more sun, ideally on your whole body. We're also looking at boosting testosterone and estrogen and all the happy hormones that we feel is from using having the sun on our whole body, right? Which then actually builds up the melatonin. Now, a lot of people struggle with their sleep. Now, why do they struggle with their sleep? Because they're disconnected, they're connecting light when it's dark and darkness when it's light outside. And so there's a mismatch. And so the body can't produce melatonin when there's a mismatch in the brain chemistry. So how do we create melatonin naturally? We get into the sun and the sunlight boosts the melatonin now, it won't release the melatonin because sunlight also produces cortisol. And so that's why, um, you know, in the morning we should eat a little bit just sometimes to, to stop the cortisol spike as, as different sugars can help bring down that cortisol. But cortisol comes up as soon as we see the sun. We're not drowsy anymore. We're not tired when we see the sun. It suppresses the melatonin. But at nighttime, it takes two to three hours of darkness, complete darkness for our, for our body to release melatonin. So the natural drowsy hormone, melatonin, only comes about in two to three hours of darkness. So if you've got the lights on, the television on, you know, all, the, all the technology on at nighttime, you're not naturally allowing your body to release the melatonin. Does that make sense? So darkness at night, light first thing in the morning, and that now when we sleep, by having more melatonin, this is the whole point, is get more melatonin so you can have the most reparative sleep. You can. You can reset your testosterone. You can reset your estrogen. You can pretty much heal your body while you sleep. Sleep is number one, right? And the way to get good sleep is to get good quality sunlight. If you're not sleeping well, sunlight deficient, right? So everyone's worried about getting burnt. Don't sit in the sun all day and get red hot, you know, third degree burns. That's not smart. But get a little bit pink. That's fine. Then get out of the sun. This will take time to build yourself up over time. You build your solar callus, which they call it. Solar Callus. Now, a really good app to download, guys, for the sun is called D Minder. D Minder. I don't know if you guys can see this. I'll put it in the chat here. D Mind. This is a free app. It lets you figure out when your sun, when the sun rises around you, figure out when the sunset is and how much of a percentage of your body is exposed to sunlight every day. So D-Minder is an app. Um, I'll put that into the, into the post after this as well for the recorded people listening to the recording. Um, and that would be a good way to start being more conscious with the sun exposure. Ideally, people, you know, people going to the gym under fake lights, we should be or in offices or in the library that I'm in right now, we should have long sleeve t-shirts. We should have hats on. We should have our blue blocking glasses to block out this fake light. We're going to get onto that in a second. Um, so sunlight heals the body. And uh, that, that's really my point there. Also, these, this is another biohack, right? These are all biohacks. It's just really realigning your biology to get the maximum result. We're looking at breath work, um, whether it's the Wim Hof method or a yogi practice breathing, you know, really calm, calming breath or a very kind of um, strong, empowering breath. There's different breathing practices out there. I'm not an expert on all of them, but I do know that the Wim Hof method for me gives me like incredible mental clarity. It helps me, my endurance in the gym as well. If you're going for a run or if you're wanting to get the most um, out of your body and chemistry, breathing is number one, <laughs> right? While we're here, can everyone take a big deep breath in and exhale slowly. Sometimes we just forget to breathe and I get excited and I forget to breathe too. So breath work is super, super important. Uh, if you haven't done the Wim Hof method, that's something that I recommend um, even just for stress, just for mental clarity. It's very, very powerful. And that combined with cold therapy is, is drastically uh, beneficial for the body. So if we want to reduce inflammation, if you look at inflammation in the body, think of inflammation as, how would you describe it? I'd describe it as, as chaos. Inflammation is chaos in the body. And if you want to make more of a visual representation, it's, it's little fires or big fires in the body. 
you look at you know an injury you sprain your wrist or you sprain your ankle it swells up it's heat now with that heat there's more nutrition and you know um you know oxygen getting to that area but in the beginning it swells up so what do you do when you sprain your ankle and it swells up with heat you put ice on it to cool it back down and so a lot of people in society they're putting on weight it's just that their body's inflamed they're expanding similar to a, a, a star when a star um, comes to the end of its life i think it's supernova it will expand and then go in and then explode and so our body is the same our bodies are expanding with inflammation. And so a great way to reduce the inflammation and to stay in a healthier voltage is through cold thermogenesis, also known as ice baths, you know, cold showers. And it's really important here, caution, if you have any, self, um, if you have any serious health conditions, please consult a medical doctor before beginning CT regimen. So this is uh, on a website. I'm gonna quickly put this into the chat here for everyone as well. And I'll put it into the, the notes here in this group with the recording or wherever this video is. But this is by Dr. Jack Cruz. He literally was about 200 pounds, um, very overweight. And through changing his light exposure, through grounding, through sunlight, through uh, cold thermogenesis, which is you know ice baths, that's the technical name for it, what I'm sharing with you here. He was able to drop a lot of his weight without exercise. So if you like to actually reduce weight without exercising, this would be one of the protocols for you. The sunlight, right? This cold thermogenesis, cold exposure. Uh, it's not comfortable, but it's very beneficial for the body because when your body gets into a cold state, it then has to heat itself up. So it heats itself up through burning its own fat and through when it burns itself up, when it burns the fat, heats itself up, it creates more negative charge. So it actually helps the mitochondria as well. So there's more electricity in the body. You know, when you jump out of an ice bath, you're so alive. Has anyone ever done it? And you've jumped down, you're like, whoa, this, you know, this is high on life. That's because there's more electrical voltage going through the body. And so, or you think about something that overheats, like if, if your car overheats, it's hot, it's, you know, it's expanded, it's dangerous. And so you've got to cool the car down for the car to be functioning and be back on the road. Our body is the same. Most people are living life with a, with a hot engine and overheating from within. And they're wondering why they're not performing, wondering why all these, why all these sickness um, symptoms, right? All these different uh, symptoms are, are, I guess, manifesting in the body. It's about reducing inflammation. The second, the, another part here, guys, is being smart with your technology. So I recommend downloading this. It's called Iris, I-R-I-S tech.co. This is, I'll put this into the chat as well, but this is a, um, a way to reduce the blue light on your computer. Whoops, I didn't post that in there. I sent that to someone else. And this is the thermogenesis article. So, um, this is what I use. Some people use Flux, F dot L U X. That's a free one. I don't, I don't like that one anymore. It's too confusing. It was mucking up my screen. So I like Iris Tech. This is like, I think 50 Australian dollars or 60 Australian dollars. And you have it for a lifetime. It's more customizable and you can change your screen from being very bright to having a bit of a tinge of like a, a um, more of a red, more orange, more of a relaxing color. So it helps the eyes. Now, on top of that, on top of Iris Tech, what I also do um, is I protect my eyes. So our eyes, I mentioned this before, the spectrum of light. If you look at, this is the spectrum of light, uh, different frequencies, different wavelengths. You've got long radio waves on the right-hand side and you have X-rays on the left-hand side. You have things like microwaves, ra um, radio waves, and the visible light spectrum is only 1%. <laughs> of this whole spectrum from above. From x-rays, I can't see x-rays or radio waves, but we can see the visible light spectrum. You know, maybe healers and different people in tune can see different frequencies. But what we have access to visibly in our retina and our eye, in our brain, is only 1% of reality. <laughs> there's, there's radio waves and frequencies shooting around our room right now. We just can't see it. And so when looking at the different spectrums, you've got the blue light, you've got the red light. So we're looking at blue light, which is more during the daytime. If you were to put it as a rating, there's a rating on, on light called, um, called Calvin. And so 6,000 to 6,500 is 12 o'clock at noon. 
12 o'clock noon is this blue light spectrum. When you go to the at nighttime, the sunrise or the sunset is more so around that red light. You get that beautiful red light with no blue light. And so blue light is very beneficial. We're not mocking blue light because blue light can kill bacteria and, and you know, um, heal, heal as well. But red light, we're deficient in that. So this is why sunrises are so important. Sunsets are so important. Uh, it's that red light. It actually penetrates deeper into the skin, as I mentioned before, can heal our organs and heal our gut and heal our blood through that red light. And so... Um, on more of a practical level for me, what I also do, and um, most people that hang out with, I recommend these blue blocking glasses. Now, I'm not the only one <laughs> who uses blue blockers. Do you um, put a yes into the chat if you use blue blockers as well? But, you know, whether it's some celebrities, this is from some movies and some models and stuff, but blue blocking glasses are probably one of the best um, investments you can make for your health, along with Healy. And so the blue light at night, if I'm watching a movie, if I am on my phone, I'm always wearing my blue blocking glasses. If I'm on a webinar, if I'm on a call, whatever, I'm always finding ways of reducing the blue light. And so I use the iris tech, like I said before, but I also use um, blue light blockers. And so I'll send you guys a link here if you'd like to invest in a pair. Um, we will be holding a, a webinar in the next couple of weeks on how to reduce it naturally as well um, with with a, a company I've partnered with called Viva Rays. Um, and they all talk about blue light blockers and, and things like that. So that's just in the chat there. Now, here's another biohack. We're going through all these different biohacks. As you can see, they're super simple, but very, very beneficial. So the future of health and wellness, the future of the wellness industry, as we know, we've all got a Healy. That's why we're here. Productions, boosts in ATP production, helping our mitochondria, reducing inflammation, you know, the testimonials for Healy around sleep and pain and skin and like these amazing transformations because our body's bioenergetic field is supported. Uh, this is through Healy. And this is why I'm so excited because it's the ultimate biohacking device, right? Everyone with a smartphone needs a Healy to regenerate themselves. The smartphone depletes us, the Healy regenerates us as well as these other healthy practices. And so a documentary to watch to learn about frequency therapy is Thrive 2. This is what it takes. This was released last year. It goes through the most incredible frequency devices out there, right? Healy's just one of them. Healy's the first and the best portable frequency device, but there's other frequency devices out there. And that's what this documentary is all about, Thrive 2. I think you can check it out online, buy it online or rent it online. Um, and so on top of that, what else can we do for our health? We're looking at food. Right. This is where my whole philosophy on wellness, it's I used to lead with food. You know, you got to change your food. That's the most important thing. You're sick, you got to change your food. Right. Step one, food. No, it's not that. I've flipped it on its head. Food is last. <laughs> food is one of the last things we talk about. It's environment, epigenetics, in frequencies. These are things that we look at first and then we look at food. So uh, eating seasonally, why it's good for your plant, for the planet, your wallet and your waistline. Now, you know, going to a local farmer's market uh, on the weekends, one of my, our favorite things to do here in Tasmania, some of the most abundant produce I've ever seen in my life as well from here, like $1.50 for like a, you know, broccoli. So, so affordable. So if you want to save money, but also eat with the seasons, it's called se eating seasonally or temperate, eating with the temperature eating with the environment. And so, as I mentioned before, these big supermarkets we go into, they have the same produce all year round. It's not natural. We shouldn't be having tomatoes all year round. We shouldn't be having carrots all year round. Like we should only eat carrots and tomatoes and broccoli and, and apples when the season of that is, is right, is, is in that month. So each month there's different produce that, that, are, um, that are ripe. And when the vine ripened, there's more nutrition, there's more environmental factors as well. So eating organic, having the actual environment, like maybe a little bit of dirt, you know, soil from organic soil. I mean, not pesticides and, and um, fungicides, but having that on the food is best. That those extra organisms from organic soil and organic food, like if you get an organic apple that's just been picked off the ground, don't wash it because you're putting more fluoride and more chemicals and chlorine from the water on your apples but eat it with a little bit of dirt on it. I know that sounds crazy, but those extra organisms our body can handle and um, 
you know, if there's a worm on there, you know, give it a good chew, it's extra protein, <laughs> up to you. But having, being more connected with nature, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Um, so, you know, when it's hot, this is why people that live around the equator, right? They should eat, they're, they're eating more light foods, vegetables, fruits, coconuts, you know, it's, it's different. People are living in the, like where I am in Tasmania near the Antarctic, right? We're pretty much es Eskimos here, but they eat high fat. They don't eat vegetables. Vegetables don't grow in where Eskimos live. Es Eskimos eat, you know, fish and whale and fat, and that's designed to help them in that environment. They shouldn't be having fruit and veg and juices and green smoothies in a cold environment. It doesn't fit. It doesn't match. It's called, a, it's called a, a mismatch. We're eating food from an environment that's not in our local vicinity. It's mismatching um, the signature for our own body to be in its full potential. If we're looking at food, food is just information. And if we've got the local sourced food from the farmer's markets from a couple of kilometers away, or the honey that's from the nearest you know, honey farm that's in your suburb, the pollen that's on the honey, that's in the honey will help with allergies because it's, it's building up our own natural resilience. Honey is amazing. And it's gotta be local to get the benefit of honey. Or for example, food signatures, we're looking at, you know, looking at it from a greater picture, celery, um, celery, if you look at it, it's long, it's strong. If you snap it, it snaps kind of like if you were to snap a bone, snap celery, snaps a bone. Now, celery, guess what's in celery? Calcium. Calcium is really good for our bones and it looks like celery, bone, celery, calcium. What's another one? Avocados. The reason I put an avocado here is because it takes nine months for a baby to grow, right? In the womb. Now, guess how long it takes for an avocado to grow? Nine months. So the fats inside the avocado are, are very beneficial for the womb um, for, for pregnancy, right? So what else? We've got tomatoes. Tomatoes have four cylinders, if, four chambers. If you cut a tomato in half or in quarters, there's different compartments. What else has four compartments, four, four cylinders? The heart. So there's lycopene, a really powerful antioxidant in the tomatoes that's really good for the heart. So we're looking at food signatures, right? So eating, if you've got a certain illness in your body, you're wanting to really help heal your heart, eat more tomatoes. What about the eyes? You have bad eyes. A lot of people wearing glasses more lately, right? It's because everyone's looking short-sighted all the time. We're not looking outside and sun gazing or gazing out into the mountains anymore. Our eyes are weak. So how do we strengthen our eyes? Well, we, we, there's certain glasses that you can buy with holes in them that strengthen your eyes for one. It's like taking your eyes to the gym. You can wear blue blockers. You can go outside, do some sun gazing and mountain gazing and things like this. That strengthens our eyes. But through food, we strengthen our eyes through carrots, right? It's the beta carotene. Now, if you cut a carrot in half on the inside, it has a circle. The circle is like our eye, like the iris. And so our food has signatures that help to heal our body. So I learned all this from Don Tolman, Tyler Tolman. This isn't my, my research. This is all from him. They have incredible books. Um, you know, I think they said that Viagra comes from peanuts <laughs> as well originally. So, you know, all these, all these amazing beneficial um, nutrients in our food that can help heal our body. So if you're really, you know, people said arthritis before or inflammation or autoimmune diseases, all these challenges can be healed, right? There are people out there who have healed their body. It's like, what environment are you putting your body in right now? And where are you mismatching? Where are you trying to trying to, I guess, create life outside of your own environment. And so eat locally, block all the blue light, protect yourself from technology and all these fake junk lights, um, um, cold thermogenesis, um, breath work, meditation, prayer, all these types of things, the Healy, they're all going to help us align to our potential. Now, we spoke about this last week, which was the Demartini process. This is a values process to figure out your your highest excitement and inspiration. That's a free test online. The values, I'll put this into the chat as well. Um, this will all be in the notes for this call. Chat. So it takes about 30 minutes to figure out what your values are and then do it every three months to re 
or every month to figure out where you're going and how you can stay aligned to your values and how you can delegate the things that are not as a priority. And when you're living a life based on your highest excitement and value uh, and, and um, inspiration, we're more creative. Our consciousness expands and we actually become our fullest potential. Our, we generate the energy inside our mitochondria naturally through staying aligned to our mission. And if we do things that are lower on our list of values, we actually um, cause more um, you know, low energy, low vibe, um, stagnation through doing things that are lower on our list. So if you're finding you're not getting your work done, it's maybe around, around figuring out your values and then getting more in alignment with your genius. This is all around finding your genius. When you're not in your genius, our body gets sick. When we're in our genius, our body heals itself. So hopefully you guys are getting a lot of value from this. Um, we're going to just, we've got one more slide and this is it. So what else can you do to boost your vitality, cleansing, right? Fasting, liver cleanses, gallbladder cleanses, intermittent fasting. You know, I did a 13 day water fast uh, last year that shifted my health dramatically. Um, I don't recommend the intense, you know, 13 day water fast, but things like juice fasting or, um, yeah, broth fasts or you know, broth cleanse. You've got uh, the blue blockers, red light panels as well. If you have no exposure to the sunlight, getting a red light panel is a great investment. Go wired, not wireless. So we're looking at, this is wireless right now. My phone is wireless. There's no wires. We've got um, the internet, the router, wired internet, or we've got wireless internet. And so I'm saying go back 10 years te technologically wise in terms of the frequencies. So if you've got Wi-Fi or a modem around your, your house, definitely turn that off at nighttime to help you sleep. But also, if you can, during the day, get a wired connection. It's Ethernet and the router. You just get a different cord and a different adapter to your computer and you can go wired. Go wired, not wireless. That's going to be quicker internet, less dropouts, but also less frequencies around you. Sleep when the sun goes down, rise when the sun comes up, right? Up with the sun, down with the sun. We're looking at gratitude practices and prayer. They say that when people come together for prayer, the violence in the area goes down, um, hospital visits go down. So collectively, if we can all have an uh, attitude for gratitude and pray and, and send these amazing um, intentions globally, you know, we can really shift this world up. And that's why I love the healing because you're using it every day. Okay, cool. Liver comes up or energy comes up or sleep comes up. It's like, okay, that's my intention. I'm going to allow myself to improve my sleep and my energy and my liver today, um, along with the healing and along with these other practices, it sets our intention. And that's what I love about the healing. It's an active intention setting process every single day to strengthen your own consciousness in manifesting, manifesting your intention. Um, personalized supplements, right? Don't just have supplements because everyone else has supplements your body is different to my body and everyone else's body so bio individuality so what works for me might not work for you so you got to figure out what are you deficient in go get blood tests talk to jack cruz he does some amazing blood tests as well get some integrated doctors to figure out a number one blood test to do would be around vitamin d levels so most people are vitamin d deficient so um, that would be one to go check out now also what else boosts our vitality is financial freedom, multiple streams of money, extra savings, more money, money, money. Money for some people is not really a topic discussed a lot. It's a bit of a, you know, the elephant in the room we don't want to talk about, but we need to talk about it. But I find as I've strengthened my relationship with money and it's just a, it's an energy exchange for value. And the more money I make, the more good I can make in this planet, on this planet, and the more healthier I can be, then I see money as, a, as a, just an energy. And so using, um, using our mind and our environment and Healy to shift through neuroplasticity to create an environment, if we want to create a Healy business, we can change it through neuroplasticity. If we don't have the energy to follow our passions and we can change it through the strategies presented here. So if we're really wanting to create financial freedom, aligning to our values, boosting our energy, getting to these trainings, sharing Healy out there. This can create, the, the Healy business can create the most amazing financial fortress for you and your, your whole family for generations to come, right? And that's why I'm so excited for this because I can will the Healy business to my kids and, and my family. So residual income, 
I believe everyone deserves residual income and the ability to follow their mission without the stress of financial, financial stress. So um, that's what I want to share with you guys. What we just covered is what is biohacking, right? We just talk about how to actually optimize our mind and body in the least amount of time and energy. Uh, and then we spoke about why is society so sick? We spoke about how to change the brain with neuroplasticity, right? Through habits, repetition, surrounding ourselves with other people, we can learn very quickly. Where does our energy come from? It comes from our mitochondria. Now we all know what that is. So it's about finding other strategies to self help, help support our mitochondria, more sunlight, more grounding, better quality food, right? Following our, our values and our mission boosts our mitochondrial ATP production, using the Healy every day, right? Letting go of emotional energetic blocks and traumas, letting go of those and stepping into a new, new identity. The ultimate vitality secrets, we went through those, which was the cold exposure, the breath exposure, the sunlight, the blue light, blockers, the iris tech. We spoke about eating seasonally, right? And what do we, what do you guys want to see next? So uh, that's the question I want to ask you guys. What do you want to see next? If you're seeing this video in the comment section, please type in what trainings, what information, what would you like for me to synthesize for you to understand uh, during these trainings? And so um, I want to say a massive thank you for